So uh, this is uh, segment three of uh, section 7.4. Um, I've realized that um, we really kind of nailed down 7.4 pretty quickly and we've moved on to 7.5. So I think when I, when I collect these um, out there uh, on Blackboard, I'm gonna put these all as just sort of a continuation uh, because this whole component representation and everything along those lines is developed in 7.5. So. Um, apologize for that, but there's really not that much in 7.4 other than this calculation of this resultant, which I think is kind of a, a weird way to do it. I mean, it's an expansion of the, um, the um, you have to kind of know the angle between things already, and, and that's kind of a, a sort of a backwards way of approaching things. But I'll, for consistency, I'll keep this as 7.4. We really are in material for 7.5. So as you recall last time, we were talking about <clears throat> the addition of two vectors if we had, we, we were talking about the representations and then what we would do if we had them in component form. And the reason I'm building up to that is because component form is the only way really to add things. If you try to add things directly using the, um, uh, using the magnitude direction form, you're gonna, you'll be able to find the magnitude and that's really what section 7.4 is all about, but you can't find the direction which is kind of useless. So um, without further ado, let me kick back over here. Um, and we will continue talking about uh, how, to, how to work these, um, these sorts of problems. So section, again, this is probably 7.5, but um, usually I just kind of bleed right into them when I'm doing this in class. I don't really make the distinction between whether I'm in 7.4 or 7.5. Um, okay, so remember we had we had last time we had we had shown that if you can if you have two vectors in component form you can add them relatively easily. Um, let's talk about what happens when you multiply by a scalar. So so again, let's use the same the same vector. Let's say that we've got u equal to and I think it was um, two comma three. Remember this is one of the ways to represent this. And notice that that's equivalent to 2i plus 3j hat, right? Both of those mean the same thing. This is just a shorthand. It's much easier to write this. This is more precise as to what's going on um, because these sorts of reduced symbols sometimes get a little confusing. Um, okay, so let's suppose that we want to have, uh, let's make k equal to, um, let's say, 2. Uh, what happens? Uh, if we have k times u. So what's k times u equal? That's sort of the question. Well, note first that just by the algebraic representation, this is two times the quantity 2i plus 3j. Right? We can't just simply only multiply the x component or the y component, but uh, it actually will distribute in such a way that this becomes 4i plus 6j. And in a general sense, so, so when I represent this back as this sort, of, uh, this sort of bracket notation, this will equal 4 comma 6. Okay. Um, now, in a general sense, what this tells us is that if you take any number times u, it will just be that number times each of the individual components. So for example, if I just do it symbolically, k times u, oh, sorry, u will be equal to, um, in, in component form will be k times u sub x comma k times u sub y, right? Gets replicated twice in there. And if you want to find the, and, and of course the magnitude is, just k times the magnitude. So maybe we can even talk about that just a little bit. So, um, uh, and, and if we look at a different representation, k times u will be equal to, well, just k times the magnitude, but in the same direction, where it's understood that if k is negative, the direction uh, even though the direction has been preserved, it's in the opposite direction. So it's like a, a negative length, if you will, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, so this really should be said if k is um, greater than or equal to zero. And if it's not greater than or equal to zero, then it's, um, uh, then we would have 
negative k times the magnitude of u, so that this becomes a positive number, and then the direction would be negative u. So that'd be if k is less than zero. Okay, we don't, that sometimes happens, but this is a very cumbersome way to work with, with algebraic operations. That's why we kind of prefer the, uh, the component form. So now let's, let's kind of put this all together and say, okay, well, what is, let's suppose, let's use some different numbers now. So suppose um, V equal to negative one comma three and W equal to, uh, let's say six comma one, find uh, 3V minus um, 2W. Okay, and we're gonna try to do this in the most efficient way possible. So the first thing to recognize is that this is, uh, since I'm not gonna use I's and J's, why, why bother? So 3V minus 2W is equal to three times negative one comma three minus two times six comma one, okay? Um, which will be equal to uh, negative three comma nine plus negative 12 comma negative two, which equals negative 15 comma seven. Okay, so pretty easy to do something with, uh, you know, sort of a linear system where we have maybe two variables. And of course, if you keep going, you know, if you had like a, a U vector or something else, you could just keep going and going and going. It doesn't really matter which order you do these in, which is kind of nice. <clears throat> So let's talk about, so this is, this is how to do addition and addition by scalar multiplication uh, in, in the sort of Cartesian system or the component form of these vectors. Let's, um, let's take a minute to sort of uh, revamp or, or relook at some of the things that we have in terms of the, um, in terms of the uh, magnitude direction system. So uh, let's see, section, 7.4, page, I think we're on page six now. Okay, so <clears throat> what we'd like to be able to do now is kind of think about how we can, how we can extract, um, how we can extract the components from the magnitude direction, because that's a lot easier to do. And then we'll look at how to go back the other way. So we want, um, we want to do this conversion. We want to go from known values of u, uh, magnitude u and direction of u to ux and uy. Okay, so this is where in some sense we know the magnitude, we have the direction, we want the components. Well, if we look again at the vector, let's say this is u, and again, I'll put my little coordinate axes on there. Maybe I'll make it a little bit skewed this time. It really doesn't matter which direction they are. So here's my ux, uy is up here. I have the magnitude of u and I have the angle of u. So notice this is where we're starting to bring trigonometry into here because uh, if you look at um, this length from the origin uh, to u sub x, well this is simply going to be the um, if you think about uh, the, the unit circle business and maybe make the, the, the length of the, or the size of the circle equal to the magnitude of u, well, it turns out that u sub x is actually the cosine of the angle times that magnitude. And that will preserve the SIGN of u sub x as well, which is kind of nice. So um, first off, u sub x will be equal to the magnitude of u times the cosine of the angle of u. And similarly, V sub X will be equal to the magnitude of U times the sine of the angle U. And I've lost the parentheses because it starts to get a little messy, but I think that in context, you'll understand what, the, what I'm talking about here. So if I want to go from magnitude U, direction U into a uh, component form, the components will simply be magnitude of u times cosine of e, of the angle u comma magnitude of u times the sine of angle u 
All right, easy enough. That's the easy one. To go backwards, though, uh, the issue the issue is that if we have you now, let's let's think about if I have u sub x and u sub y, and I want to get um, you know magnitude and direction. The magnitude's pretty easy. We go back and look at the picture. Notice that um, this is a Pythagorean. Uh, there's a there's a sort of right triangle in there, and both of its sides are u sub x and u sub y. So to find the magnitude, uh, that one's that one's pretty easy. So the um, the magnitude of u is just equal to the square root of u sub x squared plus u sub y squared. Take the square root of the whole thing and notice it does not need a plus or minus because it is a, 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 a non-negative number. So what about finding the angle? <clears throat> well, uh, if you knew why, I mean, these are essentially the y and, y and the x coordinates, right? So what we could say, there's a relationship between the angle and those coordinates directly that involves a trig function. So we can say without, without any hesitation that the tangent of the angle of u or the direction of u is equal to u sub y over u sub x. And there's a, there's a strong tendency to want to say that the direction of u is just simply the inverse tangent of that. And that's sometimes true. Um, but you have to remember that the range on inverse tangent is an angle in quadrant four or an angle in quadrant one. You can't ever get to quadrant um, two and three. So we have to create a piecewise function for this and say, well, the angle, uh, the direction of u is equal to, well, sometimes it's equal to inverse tangent of uy over ux, but that's only if ux is greater than zero. And if it's not that, and I'm going to work in degrees because that's that's pretty standard to do. Uh, so if it's so if x is negative, then we have the inverse tangent of u sub y over u sub x, and now it'll be 180 degrees out of phase. That'll get us to the, the other side of the circle. This will give us an angle in the correct direction. We might end up with some negative angles here, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, if you need to, you can, you can put in, pop in some coterminal term. This is if u sub x is less than zero. Now, what happens if, um, what happens if u sub x is actually equal to zero? Well, that's, that's a quadrant angle. And so then the, the direction will be either uh, 90 or 270, depending on the SIGN of uh, u, sub, uh, u sub y. So you imagine if you have u sub x equal to zero, um, then we can, then we can either, we're either going up, straight up or straight down. So it's either going to be 90 degrees if u sub x equal to zero and u sub y greater than zero. It'll be 270 or alternatively negative 90 doesn't really matter if u sub x equals zero and u sub y less than zero. And so this is our piecewise function. The one thing that you might be thinking is, well, isn't there a combination where we have both u sub x and u sub y equal to zero? Well, think about what that is. That's actually the zero vector and it doesn't have any direction. Points don't have directions. So Here's, um, here's sort of the layout of how we do these transformations from one to the other. If you have, um, if you have, uh, if you have the, the magnitude and the direction, you can get the components relatively easily. If you have the components, it's a little more complicated to get the direction and the, mag the magnitude is not too bad, but to get to the direction, you have to know this sort of this sort of uh, inverse tangent relationship, um, but let's let's try it with an example here. So let's let's try to convert. Let's do the easy one first. I think we're on 
page seven now. So let's take vert, uh, let's say three comma, let's put it in a, a nice a nice angle. How about 60 to standard form? So remember standard form means components. Um, all right, so right off the bat, three comma 60 is going to be equal to, okay, so it's the magnitude times the cosine of the angle, uh, comma the magnitude times the sine of the angle. And now we're sort of obliged to simplify this. This will be equal to, well, what's that? The cosine of 60 degrees is one half. I'll do this in two steps. So this is three times one half. And then uh, sine of 60 degrees is root three over two. So we have three times square root of three over two. And then to perform the operation, we have three halves comma three root three over two. All right, no sweat. Um, so the forward direction isn't really a, a super challenging thing because it's just simply take, take the trig function. And if this was some bizarre angle, you would pull out a calculator and actually calculate this, but we don't, we don't get too far into the weeds with this sort of thing. Um, so what about if we had um, the other way around, if we had say, um, let's look at, uh, let me look at one that's gonna get us a little bit of trouble here. How about, um, convert let's say negative three comma five to polar form. Sometimes polar is also called trigonometric form. Uh, so that's, that's not too unusual to hear that as well. Um, but I think the book is pretty, um, uh, consistent calling it polar, so I don't want to necessarily confuse the idea. So remember, this is where we have components and we need to find the direction, so to speak. Okay, so we do that in parts. First off, um, u, the magnitude of u, I guess I should be calling, giving these vectors names. Let me just kind of go back up here and say u equal to, and here I'll say u equal to. <clears throat> okay, so the magnitude is going to be pretty quickly, it's the square root of negative three squared plus five squared, which will just be, well, this isn't going to reduce anything nice, but we've got nine plus 25 is going to be the square root of 34. So that's its magnitude. And then the direction, well, just first observe the use of x is negative. So that means we're gonna need the alternative formulation for uh, the direction, the second one, just to bring this back up here because it was kind of went through it a little quickly. U sub X is negative. And so we have to use this inverse tangent plus 180 degrees. So I'm gonna actually, and usually when you're doing these problems, they'll tell you how many digits to go to. Um, I Standard would be like a 10th of a degree. So we'll just go with that. Um, so the, the direction of u is going to be equal to the inverse tangent of the y component over the x component, so 5 over negative 3, and uh, plus 180 degrees, which uh, I don't know what the inverse tangent of 5 over 3 is, so I'm just going to pull my calculator out here. Um, 5 divided by 3 negative, and then take the Am I in the right mode? Better come out, better put this in degrees, inverse tangent. So I get a negative 59.0-ish. So 59.03 whatever uh, degrees and then add 180 to it. Come out with 121, well, 100, yeah, 121.0. Everything rounds up, so 121.0 degrees. Okay, so to represent this, then 
uh, I've got that u is equal to magnitude, which is root 34, comma 121.0 degrees. Okay, so and we could we could confirm that by maybe drawing the picture here, and I'll just take a minute to do that over here, where we've got um, okay, so we knew that it had at the x component was negative three, the y component was five. So maybe there's five, there's negative three. There should be the tip of the arrow. And so the question then is, does it make sense for this to be about 121 degrees? And I can say, yeah, that, that seems pretty reasonable. Um, but it doesn't ever hurt to just kind of cross compare these because this is the harder process finding these angles. Because if you just said, if you'd have forgot about that 180, you might see, oh gosh, that's in the wrong direction. That can't be right. So you might have, you might have reminded yourself that you needed that. Okay, so uh, like I said, this is getting a little bit long here, but I wanted to finish this idea, um, being able to convert one to the other backwards. Um, and so we'll come back on another video, and which is purely in chapter four five and we'll talk about how to use the law of cosines to calculate angles between these. Okay, so I will see you here in a bit.